that's from um, India, I guess, right? Yep. And uh, his name is Sivan. He is a virtual education software architect. He works with subject matter experts, uh, MOOCs, digital agencies, uh, commercial software developers, virtual world developers, and educators to create simulative uh, gamification technology, architecture, and softwares. As a virtual education technology software designer, these are the core skills that help him achieve his application development goals. And uh, they're listed there. Uh, you can read that. Um, other than the above, he's also a science fiction story writer and uh, polymath, motivational speaker, electronic musician, vocalist, synthesizer, soloist, ex-model, ex-video jockey. Wow, a lot of things. And we're very blessed to have you with us today. So I'm gonna let you start uh, with the session. And um, thank you everyone, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, or right here in the Zoom, um, you're very welcome. So you can uh, start the screen sharing and I'll uh, put myself in the background. Okay. The screen share is green. It's either at the top or the bottom. Um, yeah. I have some reason. Hi, Vance. Um, welcome. I guess this is a good time for you, and I'm glad you made it. For some reason, I'm not being able to see. Um, Let me make sure that um, you can screen share. No, you've mm -hmm. got co moderator right? So you could actually do anything. You don't have need my permission. You just need to uh, click on it, click on the green, and just take over. Don't worry. Just like green, you did before. Huh? Oh, okay, cool. Okay, so uh, right. we're going to get started. There we are. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Okay, sorry, uh, Bob. I'm, a, I'm more like a Discord guy, and. Uh, and uh, I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just glad that I'm here. A little technical delay. Um, thank you, Nelly, for having me um, here for this webinar. I'm, it's a privilege. Uh, and like you said, I, I'm blessed and really blessed because, uh, because um, this is a wonderful opportunity for me to basically um, empower uh, educators around the world. This is a good time for uh, empowering educators around the world. Uh, on something I call simulative gamification. You're not um, screen sharing yet. Sorry, Sivan. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I mean, okay, I will do thanks. that right now. I'll do that. I'm aware of that. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, well, in, since, you, since you, yes. So my screen's all on now. Nelly? No, it's not. Okay, one sec. Okay, now? Yes, perfect. Oh, That's it. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, um, so yeah, so like I was saying, this is a great time uh, to empower educators around the world. So, uh, you know, let's just uh, get straight in the action. Um, you guys know what's happening with the whole COVID thing. I don't really need to tell you, uh, you know, what's going on. Um, we need some major changes. Okay, we are in a scenario where um, it's like a science fiction scenario, basically, this is what I've understood, uh, you know, and we need science fiction like solutions. And when I speak about science fiction like solutions, I, you know, there's got to be stats that make them practically applicable. It's got to be practically applicable. These solutions need to come and give, uh, provide immediate solutions uh, to people around the world. Right in areas like upskilling, counseling, virtual events, um, uh, you know, study from home, um, uh, you know, related challenges, 
uh, global related challenges, all kinds of virtualization challenges. Uh, this is what we will address. And all, it, I'm pretty sure there are millions of people working on this. But I believe I have some, uh, with the grace of God, I believe I have some um, unique solutions to provide. So let's get started. All right. So, um, so you can see the screen. Um, and this is the this is basically something I you know this pre, this picture here this image here basically represents um, an art that I created that visually uh, basically communicates the need for a science fiction like um, you know educational system or you know science fiction like solutions in the field of education and uh, if you can see it's actually it actually has a bunch of books being compressed by a zip like software and being planted as seeds into the minds of two uh, two people on the right side. And on the left side, you can see there's a lady who is uh, basically uh, stuck. And that basically represents, uh, you know, the lockdown scenario. And then you have COVID sort of like, you know, keeping her there. So now what if I told you that that's, that picture that looks like science fiction, it can't, you know, uh, what if I told you that in the slides ahead, I will be sharing uh, practical formulas to make that actually happen of being able to compress large amounts of information we uh, plant th that those patients as gamified seeds into the minds of the masses what if i told you that's practically possible all right and difficult to believe all right so keep watching here we go all right so uh who i mean uh everybody who's here other than nelly thank you for coming okay so this is going to be a 60 minute session maybe maybe a little faster than that so now we are on a 10 minute uh, thought alignment space, right? We're trying to align our space, uh, you know, we, let's align our minds um, uh, on certain, um, you know, key areas before which we start the real, uh, you know, full fledged, uh, you know, before which we discuss uh, solutions, right? So we'll start with that uh, 10 minute thought alignment uh, space. And then we will go on to a 30 minute session where I will take you through, um, uh, you know, through this PPT and also my site, which has, uh, which has supporting information. So these two pieces of information, these two elements will be predominantly what we will use as content uh, to discuss on. Other than that, we also have uh, some icebreakers to keep it engaging. I've organized some icebreakers. Um, so, so here, the core flow here is to take participants through conceptual understandings of simulated gamification examples where they explore conversion ideations, which unravel the core ingredients and formulas behind them. This will help them while designing virtual modules of their own. Okay, so what we will discuss here, my hope and my sincere hope is that it will help you open up new neural pathways in your mind, give you insights into creating better modules. I mean, of course you, create, you guys create great modules, I'm pretty sure, but I'm saying it'll probably give you new insights into thinking maybe more out of the box or thinking in new ways that that you would have otherwise not thought of. This is my hope, okay, uh, in bringing the session to you, all right? There are other things as well, but let's just keep moving, all right? So uh, there'll be two to three icebreakers, all right? And then eventually we'll have a 10 minute Q&A session. You guys can ask me questions. Uh, for the sake of the flow of the session, uh, we will keep Q&As to, uh, towards the end because the session is sort of like an intertwined connected kind of a session. So you might, want, you might have a doubt somewhere in the 15 minute, and I might want to keep that as a surprise because there's something connected with it coming up in the 20th minute. So for keeping the flow of the session, all questions, please, I request all participants to note down questions uh, that come in your mind onto a notepad or something. And then you can, I'll, I'm here for the next two hours. You guys can ask me as many questions. You can mail me, whatever, right? All right, let's keep moving. Okay, so what is it, the, what is the value that I have to offer? I'm here to tell educators that you can make that digital transformation leap that the pandemic demands. You can. Okay, that's straight in the action. I mean, there's, the, there's a lot of people thinking, can we? Yes, you can. I'm here to tell you that you can. And not only tell you that you can from a motivational speaker perspective, but also equip, equip you with tools and backups to mutate into a new version of you, teaching millions from the comforts of your homes in ways that would have made the pre-COVID version of you say, oh my God, now that seems like straight out of a science fiction movie. You know, I mean, that's it. But then you need to understand that that's the kind of solutions we do, we do we, that we need now. This is no ordinary situation here, which is the coronavirus, right? Okay, so now 
here's a little a, a bunch of things that we need to keep in mind. Uh, we forget sometimes that uh, what was science fiction yesterday is reality today. When I speak about science fiction like solutions, a lot of people, uh, it's, uh, once upon a time, even me, I forgot, uh, you know, people forget that what was science fiction yesterday is a reality today. And what is science fiction today will become a reality tomorrow, right? It's a normal thing. Let's not make a big deal out of, oh my God, who's going to come up with science fiction like solutions? We are already living science fiction because what, what, is, what is reality today was science fiction yesterday. Let's keep that in mind. Hmm? And the second thing is basically something that I'd like to share about identity. And why I'm sharing these things is because, um, you know, before you guys say, oh God, is he going to get all philosophical on us? No, it's, it's not. Just a few little things that I need to share with you this slide because I feel uh, to really adapt to the solutions that we have, or I'm going to be mentioning in this PPT, there's a need for some, there's a need for a mind change just for five mind wise, all of us actually, right? So if I were to ask you the ratio between everything that we humans know and everything that we humans do not know, what would that ratio be? The ratio would be one is to infinite, all right? So the question is that what do we really know? Hmm? The answer is, you check that out, okay? Everything that we know versus everything that we do not know is one is to infinite. So what do we really know? Truth is not much, okay? Because if you take all the knowledge that we know and visualize it as a football and keep going backwards from that football and the z-axis, you will find that that ball is into infiniteness, right? So once again, the question that we can ask ourselves is what do we really know? Hmm? Haven't we reduced um, infiniteness into a reality that we can navigate in, and navigate in and assume that all that we see is all that there is? That's a common uh, delusion that I see in the masses a lot of times. I'm not trying to be critical, but th this is something even I get into, okay? So all of these things apply to me also. So we have a tendency to think that all that we see is all that there is. That's irrational, all right? So uh, so this is, these are certain things that we need to look into that there's more to it uh, than what we know. And why is that relevant here? Why do we walk in a Identities with fleshly limitations. Hmm? It's identity that determines thoughts and actions. Identity comes first, right? So it's identity that determines thoughts and actions. Hmm? So I'm here to uh, explore answers to these questions um, uh, with you so that, that uh, it helps us in uh, overcoming COVID-19 related challenges. Right, these psychological uh, transformations are really required right now. Right, so we'll talk about this more later, but let's go on to the next slide. Now let's talk about, all right, so all that psychological, let's talk about what can you offer us technically? If you guys are educators and you guys are wondering, all right, that's good. We read a lot of psychology books, great. So what can you now give us on a technical basis? Okay, so these are the pointers. Mm -hmm. Number one. Um, the examples of simulated gamification tools and projects discussed through this webinar should open up new understandings of possibilities when designing engaging virtual modules in any subject by you. You're an educator. The examples that I'm going to provide ahead, okay, of simulated gamification tools should open up new understandings of possibilities when you design engaging virtual modules of your own in any subject, okay, regardless of whether you teach 5th graders, 12th graders, upskilling, corporates, whatever. Now, point number two, provides a clear understanding on how subject matter experts can collaborate with Savan, who is a virtual education software architect in creating scalable and out-of-the-box phone or laptop-centric entertainment applications. So I'm a virtual education software architect. And uh, this webinar will give you a clear understanding of how you and me, we can collaborate. You as a new a subject matter expert or an educator, as of now, pretty much anybody in the world, uh, you see, you know, how we can collaborate and um, you know, and create scalable and out of the box phone or laptop centric edutainment applications, right? Now, explore possibilities of restoring a photorealistic version of your school or university virtually along with me, Savan, who has a blueprint for the same that he is, or that I'm working on with collaborators on, all right? So, well, this is, uh, this, uh, this is an ideation and it's not just an ideation, it's a very practically implementable ideation that I'm working with collaborators on. It's basically about restoring buildings that are closed down. We, you know, like let's say you have a school building closed. Uh, you can't access it due to COVID. Now, I have certain solutions that I will show you ahead, which basically deals with how can we bring it back to life virtually 
in a you know a scalable economic photorealistic fashion all right so now um other than that so so this picture that you see here of this lady uh, she's holding a, a you know sort of like a Tony Stark like hologram from the movie uh, Iron Man and uh, this is basically uh, an invention of mine an innovation of mine where i can have you as an educator sit at the comforts of your home and using green screen technology and certain other uh, um do the same thing as what tony stark did in that movie basically have these holographic interfaces and show them uh, to your students and use it as a explanation tool a gamifying tool it's just an idea of the kind of things that we can do all right so let's move on to the next slide so now these are the three major areas that we will cover in this session which is one power of game based learning formula innovative gamification two insights on creating educational content that is future ready using simulated gamification um three innovative simulation possibilities that restore schools and university buildings university buildings in access to the covid-19 lockdown the virtual replicas and battle activity centers so we we discussed that so at the bottom you can see you can see a link you need to have that link open because that link and this ppt basically will be the core content for this session right so let's move on to the next uh, slide all right so let's get into action now uh let's align our thoughts because we need to you know sort of, sort of like uh, our mind needs to kind of align with what's going on very quickly because only then will you be able to understand the emergency and intensity for the kind of solutions that I I will explain uh, in just about 5 10 minutes okay so number 1 1.2 billion children out of classrooms you already know that right okay um as a result e learning is a big 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 thing what was alternate yesterday is mainstream today okay and what was mainstream yesterday is not even to be seen i mean hardly okay so now what does research suggest and there are a lot of people who are happy and as far as i can see since april uh, that news is from april but ever since even if you check today's news you find that the need for online learning has is only increasing and we have increasing number of people saying that we're not going to go back to how it was right so let's go to the next slide So my conclusion we are not going to go back to how it used to be that's the truth all right i mean it's not just me but then it's uh, pretty much uh, the whole world talking about this right now i would like to bring your attention especially to this article below and i'll just quickly read up from it for you the pandemic will force universities voca- vocational colleges providers of professional training and other post secondary institutions to flip the sequence people need jobs now and they won't be willing to invest in education without that promise they will demand programs with the express purpose of preparing graduates to enter jobs key ingredients include modular and profession specific program design as well as a clear understanding of where the jobs are in a rapidly shifting economy the immediate need for millions of people to find uh employment and earn an income means that program length will have to be un, uh measured in weeks rather than years it also means that programs should be held accountable for delivering employment outcomes now this is a good news why the transformation could give us the opportunity to rebuild the educational system to actually yield employment financial wellbeing and personal dignity uh, let's check that article out when you do get time it's uh, what basically in the essence is basically we will need to reinvent all right so that's the topic of the next slide uh that's the word on everybody's mouth reinvent i like that word in reinvent i don't just love it it's just been my my word for a very long time invent all right so reinvent so you can see the news uh those links are there you guys can check that out you can go go to google and type covid and reinvent education system you find tons of articles so now let's talk solutions so i'm not here to make you guys all worried all the time i think the news is doing a good job of that <laughs> right uh I'm here to give you guys some solutions. All right. So now here's the solution. My key to reinventing education equals simulated gamification. Now, am I saying that that's the only solution? Not. There's probably a lot of people, you know, people working on different kind of things. Uh, am I saying it's a very good solution? Absolutely. Why is it a very good solution? Why is simulated gamification a very good solution for uh, helping people, uh, helping students and corporates? especially students with dealing with uh virtualization challenges when it comes to online learning um so now let's just look at the picture there you can see that that's a simulation what is now what is this what is simulated gamification so there's a slide that'll tell you what that is but let's just look at that picture quickly 
you can see that picture. It's basically an interface of a software that I'm designing. It's a simulated gamification software that replicates a school building. Okay, you can see a realistic view of this uh, of the buildings in the background. So that's a photorealism that I'm talking to you about. You can see the students are pretty much uh, realistic. They are made from selfies. Um, it's using a, a kind of uh, architecture called isometric architecture. It's 2D that looks like 3D, but uh, you know, yet gives you the facility of photorealism. And that is a big thing, basically. Right? Am I against all the people who do pure theory at 3D? Absolutely not. I work with them as well. I'm a freelancer. Uh, so I work with all kinds of people. But then this is something I'm working on. And it's not about this particular picture in general or this design in general, but it's about simulative gamification. Okay. So on the right, you can see that uh, there's a student who's trying to uh, do, th it's like a cognitive, it's like a surgery that uh, she's, uh, uh, you know, it's like a simulative surgery and uh, she's on a zero gravity. That's the speciality of the simulation. You know, students can go into zero gravity mode, fly around and, uh, you know, collaboratively study things together, you know, you know, like do a heart surgery, put an engine together or, you know, make music together, all kinds of different kinds of things. And below you can see there's a teacher and next to chapter 23 on the right side bottom, you can see the teacher and you can download uh, the subject there, uh, the, the, top, the subject in hand there, which is cardiology chapter 23. And on the left side, you find these students actually there in Zoom on the left side. So this is a design. This is a perfect example of simulative gamification. Of course, there's a tournament, there's scores. You know, we can give our prizes and stuff over a period of time. You know, I can have a gamification leaderboard or lots of possibilities. So, but this is to give you an idea of what is simulated gamification, so let's move ahead. So let's look at why simulated gamification, right? I mean, it's such a, you know, humongous issue that's happening all over the world. And you say that simulated gamification can solve the problem. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so how? It was already difficult controlling students in regular classrooms, but now we're studying from home being the new, a new normal, controlling them through platforms that were considered distractions pre-COVID, possibly in an environment where the parents themselves are stressed due to unemployment or pay cuts, etc., cetera, uh, are seen straight out of a teacher's nightmare from pre-COVID days just a few months ago. Sorry, I make these long sentences. It's like a flow state, you know, I just flow with it. So if I back up with like really long sentences, please forgive me. All right, so. So what does that mean? That means, think about it. I mean, it's about six months back. If you tell, told a teacher that you're going to have like this, uh, you know, sci-fi crazy scenario where, uh, you know, I mean, you have, uh, you have to have students sit at home and work on things and study while controlling them. And yet they have to use those same devices which you once told them were distractions. Can you imagine what that means? I don't know if the, I really don't know even if the world has really come up and opened up to this ideation. It's the truth. Actually, I have seen some sites where people speak uh, about this, but it, it's not an easy thing to do. Think about it. It was all in classrooms. Now imagine they're in a place where even their parents are stressed out because of job cuts and stuff. So how are you going to do it? All right. So there's a solution. I'm, I'm, I'm the solutions guy, okay, with the grace of God. And the solution is this. You need to give them what they need to do through what they love to do so that what they need to do becomes what they love to do. How'd you guys like that? That's poetic, isn't it? You need to give them what they need to do through what they love to do so that what they need to do becomes what they love to do. That's all. It's as easy, it's as, easy as that. So what is it that they love to do? It's not very difficult. I mean, what, I mean, if you're a mother or a father, you already know what your kids love to do. Come on. I don't have to teach you that, right? If you're a kid, you already know what you love to do, right? So what is it that you love to do? You love playing games. You love digital devices, music, art, selfies, technology, participation, prizes, social media. These are things that they love to do, which is what you, which is pretty much, I think even the fathers and mothers, if you're a father, even you guys love to do it, don't accept it. Now, what do we need to do? We need to give them what they need to do through what they love to do. So that's what, what that's what they love to do. So what is it that they need to do? What is it that they need to do? They need to study, all right? So we need to give them their study material through that material that they love to hang out Right? which is games, digital devices, music, art, selfies, technology, participation, prices, social media. Why? Because um, this is, when you give these kids something that, to what they love to do, they're already doing it. There's no question of distractions. Those very distractions now become a useful tool. They're no longer a distraction. They're actually useful. 
but the kids will still do it because they love it. It's just now, now it's like the distractions become a good thing now. All right, so now you already know that this also applies to this kind of model of where we give people what they need to do through what they love to do. This model also applies to upskilling and employee entertainment in corporate scenarios and work from home scenarios. Mm -hmm. Now, yet another aspect is, uh, you know, that comes across in my mind is that the human mind since centuries is used to building, is used to um, building rooms and cities based thrive and explore systems. And hence benefits are given lockdown affected buildings, a virtual replica of their pre-COVID lifestyle cannot be encountered, isn't it? Think about it. I mean, listen, you've got a building that you've been going to for 20 years or something. All of a sudden they shut it down and like, what is going on, dude? And all of a sudden, there's someone who comes up and says, you know what, I'm going to give you a virtual replica of that same building with its rooms to the point where even the coffee cup looks exactly like how it used to look in that room. Okay. And put you in as a photorealistic avatar and you can mix with your friends and you can really restore that building back to you. How would you feel? You definitely should feel good. And uh, that's simulation. So put these things together giving people what they need to do through what they love to do, plus uh, the simulation, assimilative environments, either their environments restored or new environments. Together, we have this phrase called simulative gamification, right? right? Now that's exactly the kind of stuff that we're gonna be discussing on how to design these simulative gamification uh, modules. All right. So how does it work and how can it help educators and subject matter experts? Okay, so that's what we are now. We're going straight to the point, how you can do it, okay? Uh, before that, it's time for some neural break dance. Okay, so we're gonna do an icebreaker. Uh, I do not, I think we have enough participants. We have, we have people. All right, so can I unmute you guys? Yes, that's what I suggested. Let me um, unmute. Everybody can unmute themselves um, one at a time as they wish. Okay, so that's enabled. Okay. So, Peter Ramal and Sandra, um, we, let's do an icebreaker, right? Can you guys hear me? You want to guess one say something? What's up? Yes, good, good, good. Hello. Yeah. All right. Uh, can we unmute, unmute uh, Sandra as well? I think she's mute. It, it says... Uh, no, um, Savan, uh, anyone who wants to speak can unmute themselves at any time. Oh, okay. okay. People that, are, right. are, are shy, so <laughs> that's okay. I got it, I got it. That's all right. So, all right. So, uh, so uh, this is a nice breaker. All right. So we've got like about 30 seconds to get this done. Uh, if you if you check out my site, uh, uh, you guys can go to this link here at the bottom. Okay, at the bottom here, please go to this link, virtualarchitect7.weebly.com. Okay, this is how we will do our icebreaker. Please go to that link. I'm going to give you 15 seconds to do that. And I'm going to tell you a term, and you need to search and tell me the number of the post that term is located in. Okay, this is what you need to do. So... Okay, so I'm assuming you guys are there. Okay, repeat the task again. Can we go over, repeat the task again? Yes, are you there on the page? Okay, which page? The page, the, the page is here at the bottom on the screen. You can, can you see the link? Virtualarchitects.weebly.com Can you paste the URL on the chat box? Or at yeah, I, I think I can do that, no problem. Just a second. Okay. So... Do you guys get the link? Yeah. Okay. All right. So go to that link. And what I want you to do basically is um, search for a term that I'm going to tell you. And if you can tell me the right post number, whoever tells me the right post number, 
Uh, the term that I'm going to tell you will be classified under a post number. There are 28 posts and it's under one post and it has a number and you need to tell me what that number is, right? Or you can type and text that number here onto the chat room, okay? And the term is basically virtual swimming. Repeat. The term is virtual swimming pool. We have to identify the word. That's right, virtual swimming pool. And tell me the post number. Sure. It's actually quite easy. You just have to control F, virtual swimming pool. So I'll repeat it again. Basically, there are there are uh, the there are posts on that page, twenty eight posts, and this term, virtual swimming pool, or you can even try virtual pool. Basically, is located under one of the posts, and the post has a number, and I want you to post the number here. What is the post number of where that term is located? Does it, virtual does it pool. Be a heading or a word in the con in the text. It, it, it can be a word in the text. A word in the text. Okay. Yes. That's a lot of scanning. <laughs> All right. Someone already go, woo. And I found the word, okay. Post, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, Sandra got the answer. It's post number nine and congratulations. Let me just uh, congratulate her. That's wonderful. <laughs> Sandra's <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> Sandra got it. Jeez. All right, so, but have a look at it. Uh, uh, have a look at that concept because you see, it's actually useful to us now in what I'm going to be explaining. So have a look at that picture of the, uh, you know, the virtual swimming pool. And it, because it's also a simulative gamification um, uh, concept. Uh, do you know what I was doing wrong? I was mm -hmm. going word for word, scanning word for word. Page for page. Oh, okay. <laughs> did, but did you find it? Did you did you no, did you find I it? I didn't until you just give me the answer. I did not find it. Just not me find it. Post nine. Yeah, post nine. Did you see this? Can you see the virtual swimming pool? Have a look at it. Yes, virtual pool. Yes. All right. So so now I'll just continue with the screen share, and um, so that we can. One sec. All right, so we're back on track. And, okay, you guys can see the screen now? Yes, yeah. All right, all right. okay, cool. So we were on, uh, we were here. Yeah, this is where we were. So now we were talking about simulative gamification. So now here's simulative gamification broken down a little bit more, okay? Simulative gamification, now you need to understand what I'm describing here is something that I am saying is a key solution to uh, online learning global. So uh, it's it's got some relevance. So guys, pay attention because we can really do some stuff with this, right? So simulation equals simulation plus gamification. These are two terms, simulation, and that's one term, and gamification is the second term, right? So what do we cover under simulation? Okay, first, simulation of educational concepts or thematic environments that can teach them. We've come across simulations that can teach. I'm sure all of you guys have come across simulations that can teach, all right? Now, what is the second kind of simulations that we're doing here? Now, this is what, we, what I described earlier, simulation of closed school, university, or office buildings, AKA virtual restoration. So virtual restorations of structures that, uh, that, are, that, have, that were closed, that are closed, I would even that way, I mean, what do I mean? What that they are close now, the ones that are inaccessible due to COVID. And the third simulation is story and video game based simulations, right? So basically, if you look at it, even the video game is a simulation and a story is a simulation. So these are the three key ingredients that I use in my simulations. 
Now, what is gamification? All right, so we need to give some interaction to the simulation. Of course, we can have people move around, but we need to gamify the whole thing and make it engaging, right? So there's two kinds of gamification. One is gamification in its, uh, you know, as people know it, which is what leaderboards on top. Leaderboards, basically daily top, top scores or activities within these simulations so that we get people to come back and play more and more. And since these are educational simulations, they get to learn more and more. So, so that's one kind of game. Leaderboards. What's the other kind of gamification? Now, the other kind of gamification is basically game-based learning. All right. Now, where we have it, now this is where uh, I have designed certain educational algorithms and formulas that create new or remixed um, assessment assimilation tools. All right. So these these are basically game-based learning formulas, basically mathematical uh, algorithms that connect education with various gaming elements. That's and, to, and so therefore you result in a gamified educational system. They are called, that's why, game-based learning. Okay, so now, simulation plus gamification together equals, equals simulate, simulate. Yeah, yeah, please, please, please ask me, please. You know, when you talked about, um... Mathematical um, algorithms. From, yes, from the formula and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Do you think teachers who are getting into this system as a result of COVID nineteen will they be able to use it friendly or be user friendly or not? Will it Absolutely. I will show you how. As you, that's why when you proceed, uh, as we proceed, I will show you how this is done. Is that okay? Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Peter, your your, uh, am I, is your name Peter? Yes, sir. Peter. Yeah. Peter, yeah. Sorry, Peter. Uh, the thing is, uh, it, uh, this is not because I love your questions, man. I love questions. I love answering questions. All right. But you see, the thing is, the whole thing is intertwined and interconnected. So, uh, what I would like to request you to do is if you can note down your questions, after the session, I'll spend even an hour if you want to answer all your questions. So would you, is that okay if, if you can just note down the questions? Can we do all the questions in the end together? That's wonderful. <clears throat> okay, th thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, before we go on, let's look at, so we, we understood what simulated gamification from a theoretical perspective. Now let's look at the money side of it. What's the kind of monies that we are looking at in game-based learning, right? Now, you, we need to understand that uh, it's for educators. Although they are not gaming like yourself, like Peter and everybody else here, like, uh, you know, game-based learning basically involves education, but in a gamified fashion, right? So what are the kind of monies that you're looking at, both for gamification and game-based learning, both of which together I call gamification, okay? So now in 2019, 2024, global game -based learning markets sees games industry boom phase it was already on a boom phase and the kind of prediction was 24 billion dollars by 2024 now this is pre-covid before all the schools and colleges shut down okay or before all the offices shut down closed down this was the projection before that right and if you look at the right side that's gamification all right and the prediction was 32 billion dollars all right the, uh, i think the same period i think 2024 we were supposed to touch that $2 billion. But this again is basically, um, uh, you know, pre-COVID. Post-COVID, sky's the limit. We have no clue uh, the kind of money we're looking at. And, and the reason is simple, why? Why is it that gamification, game-based learning is so popular? Why is it such a big industry? It's because people have, there are 4.5 billion digital phone users globally as of now. And there are, um, 2 billion PC slash laptop users globally right now. Now, giving them educational information in an engaging fashion, there's nothing I'm telling you guys, there's nothing, as of now, I've not come across anything more engaging than gamification, game-based learning. And why? I'll tell you. Let's just check out the next person's slides. So before, yeah, there's something else that we need to do. I'd like to request you guys to go to that site again and control F post 10. Can you do that, Peter? You can go to the site. 
Peter, Nelly, Sandra, anybody else? Go to my site and click on uh, and control find post 10, P-O-S-T 1-0. And in post 10, I'll stop the screen share and take you guys there. It's actually under the virtual pool. Yes, it's right under the virtual pool. Yes, so this is where you should be. Yeah. So these are now what I describe game-based learning formulas. Okay. Now you can see it's written at the bottom there. It, these are formulas that um, I have conceptualized personally. Um, there are some influences on and off, but a whole lot of things that I, um, you know, sort of like spend a long time with a long beard, you know, sort of like Robinson Crusoe in an isolated lab for like many years and came up with sort of like a crazy professor kind of scenario, right? So, uh, the one that you see now basically is one example of a game-based learning formula. We won't go through all of it. I'll leave it for you guys to check it out later. But let me just take you, for example, through this one, right? So this one here is basically business data. The formula is here. Business data uses environment elements in an action video game can double as collectibles or interactables that require recall of educational info in order to activate them. Means a video game, if you replace its environments with business, it, you know, we can replace its environment elements with business data or infographics, not, not necessarily business data, but infographics, right? In this case, business data, but it can also be charts from textbooks, uh, mathematical, uh, you know, illustrations or, or all kinds of different kinds of things. And, uh, you, you, we can design interactions inside the video game in such a fashion where um, without disturbing the video game's actual gameplay too much, we can still make it educational. That's what this formula is described, okay? If you guys find that a little complex, don't worry, put that down in your questions. I will sit down here and give you guys all the answers you need, but let's just get ahead with the session because we are live. But then put that, if you have any doubts, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll just give you all the answers once we're done, all right? So that's a formula, okay? So now let's go back to the, so there's this, if you, there's a slideshow. You can see if you click, click play here, there's many more. You can see many more here. You check through all of it. These are all very interesting tools for educators. And I'm, I'm definitely there to help you guys out on it, okay? I mean, we can collaborate virtually. So that's what I will be explaining now. So let's let's just get to the PPE just a second. Okay. So, so can you guys see my PPT? Yeah. Yes, 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 sir. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So now we are on, we are, I'm gonna break down one formula big time. And it's actually a very, very relevant formula as far as coronavirus is concerned. Okay, so guys, what I wanna tell all of you is, I don't want, please don't think that these are some crazy, uh, I, these are ideations that, uh, you know, uh, like, you know, will work some 10 years from now or something. These are all ideations that we can implement in the next 15 days to 20 days to a month max. I mean, it's very quickly. And they have practical applications for COVID-related virtualization challenges in fields like study from home, work from home, upskilling, reskilling, counseling, virtual events, etc. So these are practically, and I'll show you how we practically apply them. So let's look at this formula here. If you take a 300 page book, compress it to 80 key insights of 10 live abstract, 10 line abstracts each and gamify these key insights, seeds, and then plant it into the world, into the minds of 100 participants through a three, three hour, 15 hour long gamified workshop, then the learning experience of the original content, which is a 300 page book is enhanced between 10 to 58 compared to a scenario where they would, where they would not have had attended the workshop. 
So what does that mean? Means in layman's terms, okay? Uh, okay, well, let's look at it from a layman's terms. So before, let's understand what that means. So when you guys get time, go to that link there, not now, but then later, it's called getabstract.com slash EM. When you have time later, do that. It basically explains a concept that's been year, that's been around for many, many years, which is what? You can create abstracts from large volumes of information. That's all. That you can take large pieces of information, like let's say, like a, what, let's say, for example, let's say we can take five pages of information and reduce that information into its conceptual essence, means serify it or compress it. All right. Because if you really look at it, what is knowledge? We need to ask ourselves this question. What is knowledge? All knowledge, and I'm talking about all knowledge in any field. Knowledge is basically concepts and its practical applications. That's all. Any knowledge, you think of any knowledge, anything you're thinking about right now is basically either a, con it's a concept and you're thinking about its practical applications. For example, let's think of something very weird, like, very, uh, like, a, you know, like a flower or something. What is a flower? It's a concept. It's an observation made by man and he's you know, created this concept around it called flower. It has practical applications that you can make perfume out of it or you can make other stuff out of it. So it has practical applications. Okay, now if you really go into, you know, look at what really a flower is from a very deep philosophical perspective, there is an infiniteness that we would go into on a nano scale. So let's not go there. From a humanly comprehensible perspective, a flower is a concept that we've understood as something which is pretty to look at. All right, it has practical applications. Take a stethoscope of a doctor. It's a concept and it has practical applications. It's used to check, you know, it's do, used to do medical stuff. All right. Keeping that in mind uh, and coming back to where we were, we can compress large pieces of information, multiple, you know, into, uh, into, uh, into uh, conceptual seeds. We can compress information into, uh, you know, conceptual seeds. Now, why is that relevant here? So before that, let me tell you that I personally, I have achieved 88% comp compression rates when it comes to compressing entire chapters, which I will call tree data into seed data. Means the compressed form is called seed and what we compressed it from is called the tree. And this has been achieved without losing too much of the core essence conceptual meaning of the chapter was not lost. What the chapter was really trying to communicate in essence wasn't lost after 88% compression. And that's very valid. You will know why as I speak forward. So now again, so let me show you a different connection. That formula that we spoke about in the previous slide, which we are exploring, which is, if you look at the formula again and connect it to the new snippet, it's not new exactly, I have this S, sorry for the typo, okay? There is a new snippet, which I find very interesting, okay? And the, and the formula is, once again, if you take a 300-page book, compress it to 80 key insights of 10 line abstracts each and gamify these key insights, sees, and then plan it to the minds of 100 participants through a three to 15 hour long gamified workshop, then the learning experience of the original content, 300-page book, tree data, is enhanced between 2x to 10x, exactly 2x to 10x, sorry. Earlier it was mentioned, and that, uh, there's a correction there, 2x to 10x, compared to a scenario where they would not have that attend, attend the workshop, which means if you take a book and compress it to 80 of its key, 80 key insights. So let's say the book has about, let's say 20 chapters. And in 20 chapters, let's say each chapter has about four insights, which are really, really, you know, the core concepts of the book, okay? So we get 80 key concepts. We have reduced that 300 page book into 80 key concepts of let's say 10 line abstracts, means it's explained in 10 lines each. So we have a 300 page, page book compressed to 80 key insights of 10 line abstracts each. Now that we gamify these key insights, that's the next part now. We got the compression part, now let's gamify it. Okay, now if we gamify these key insights and then plant it in the minds of 100 participants. Now how do we gamify it? I'll tell you about it. And then plant it in the minds of 100 participants through a three hour, 15 hour long gamified workshop. Then the learning experience of the original content, the 300 page book, free data is enhanced between 2x to 10x compared to scenario where they would not have attended the workshop. I mean, people who have not attended the workshop this workshop of planting the 300 page book as 80 key insights compressed into, uh, you know, seeds in a three, you know, in this workshop. Let's assume a whole bunch of people did not attend this workshop. Compared to them, the ones who did attend, when they go to learn the actual book with this full details, they'd find that experience 2x to 10x more easier than the ones that did not attend. That's this formula. 
So you guys can ask your questions later. Put down your questions, guys. I mean, if it's complex, don't worry about it. I'll explain to you guys later. But then, but since this is live, let's keep going on. All right. So now let's kind of with the news, uh, the news snippet that we have. The pandemic will force universities. Now we're coming back to you know the scenario, reality, Corona, coronavirus. All right. The pandemic will force universities, vocational colleges, provide professional training, and uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. To flip the sequence, people need jobs now and they won't be willing to invest in education without that promise. They will demand programs with the express purpose of preparing graduates to enter jobs. So it has to be job-based. We need to redesign education to be job-oriented because people need jobs. There's millions and billions of people who will be laid off. The last time I read the news is two million teachers who've been laid off in just America. So let's not even talk about the world. So now let's talk about education that prepares people for immediate jobs, you know, job-based education, basically, right? And we're not talking years. If you, if you go to that link and read that article, when you get time, there are many more articles of that type on the internet. You find that it's no longer, a, 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 a you know, a, people are looking for like 15 day courses, you know, where they can turn that into money, a month long course, two month max, you know, Am I saying that the graduating system is going to get obsolete? I'm not saying that. Do I know that for sure? I don't know. But this is the need of the hour. This I do. Okay, so. So now let's go back to, so if you see the formula of actually taking a full book and planting it as conceptual seeds in the mind of participants from the comforts of their home by compressing, into, compressing that book into gamified seeds and teaching them in one day, okay, max two days or three days, can you see how fast we've managed to give them this understanding of the essence of that book? First of all, it helps them know if that book and that job is for them or not, much more faster than two months of going into some kind of course for six months. Okay, three, you see, it was procrastination. So the benefits, are, I, we'll, we'll check out the benefits point by point. There's so many benefits, okay? So once again, going back to the formula in layman's terms, Extract conceptual abstracts of the whole book and gamify this data and present as a smartphone-centric virtual gamified workshop with prices. Now, this extracted data is converted to the below mentioned seed type for gamification, and this greatly provides scope for enhanced aesthetics and immersive gameplay, gameplay for participants. This is that formula in layman's terms. Now, let's look at uh, okay. Now, let's look at how this process is done. It means okay, we've got uh, this information and we are compressing it into seeds. We've made it, uh, we've taken, uh, you know, we've turned it into 10 line abstracts. So 300 page book, 80 key insights. Each insight is 10 line abstracts. Now, what do we do with these abstracts? How do we gamify it? What's the next step? All right, so we turn these abstracts in, uh, we have this, these are the following options that we have, uh, you know, uh, before which uh, we can turn that, uh, turn, to turn them into a game, right? A, we leave them as text. We can leave them as text and text can be game file. I'll show you how later. B, videos, abstract transform, transform to videos, which is then processed in various ways to create gamified experiences. C, charts, abstract compressed further into charts that communicate the same info differently. D, audio, abstract converted audio files can be game file, for example, uh, you know, like a chat pod in a video game classroom that reveals info upon collision by a game character. You see, we, we already speak gamification there. Infographics, right? These are various ways that we can take those abstracts, which is 10 line abstracts, and we've taken it to the next step before which we throw it into the game making factory. All right, so check it out. Now here's one example. It's a, comp a full-fledged compression algorithm. What did we do? It's a visual and it's visual compression basically. A concept explained through around 10 to 15 pages of pure text information with some basic black and white charts and tables can be serified and the game file look like the scene from the surreal counseling based video game ideation developed by Savant. The video game environment takes participants into the brains as a character and in this case it's a nanobot. Means we took a lot of information and instead of presenting it as 30 pages of information we reduced it to 10 line abstracts of let's say five seeds, okay? We took those seeds and converted it into visuals and then we gamified that visual into a video game. This is what we get when we do that. 
If you guys have questions, you guys can ask me later. But let's just run with it. All right. So let's look at another compression algorithm. Now here's another one. Here's another example of educational content CD5 as a multi c video game with environments that represent the schema and environment of the patient and the players play. Uh, okay. And environment, okay, so environments that represent the inner scheme and environment of the patient. Um, and here the players play surreal divers. You can see that in the picture, there is a diver. And it's a simulation where, let's say you're playing along with, let's say, a thousand people around the world, okay, and you're all on Zoom. And, um, and you have teams, okay. What we've designed here is we have simulated the mind of a patient, okay. So we've taken a psychology textbook let's say for example if you've gone through psychology textbooks you find lots of case studies the lots of cases oh you have no idea right now the world sees more case studies than it has ever seen thanks to corona there's a pandemic of mental issues that's happening globally it's not a very happy thing to say i mean i look all chirpy but then guys it's not really a very good thing i mean you know, there's a lot of people who went through a very rough batch right so we can help them by creating gamified counseling sessions this way Right? We can take case studies of somebody who's really fighting out you know, corona-related issues and simulate his mind and help participants go into the mind, as in this case, a diver, and fix things up. But you need to understand when, the, when this guy is fixing things up in someone else's mind, when these people are doing that, they're also fixing things up in their own minds. So with the proper subject matter expert, they can really help a lot of people with this. But coming back to how this connects to uh, what we'll be talking about, Visual compression. So we've taken a lot of information psychology, it's like, uh, psychology information, converted it into a simulational counseling game. Okay, so we'll take down your questions. I'll answer all that. Now, yeah, this is a, okay. This is something that I'm, I was uh, doing for a car company, and then when then COVID showed up, and that contract got stalled. <laughs> man, it's a crazy man what's going on. Uh, so it's this. This is basically a video of the car company, and I have basically mixed it with a story. Okay, so it's here. Similarly, 10 to 15 pages of free data can also be compressed into a video-based seed. For example, 15 page information of a car engine design book can be compressed to a two-minute video. This video can be storified and gamified for simulated gamification workshops as shown below. Okay, I mean, they, they do intend to work with me, but as of now, there's a little pause. So here's the deal button. What this? What is this? Basically, um, it's like 15 pages of free data, okay? And they, we made a video out of that free data. What is this free data? Basically, um, stuff connected with the with various parts of the car, its engine, like a technical manual, both from a promotional uh, promotional perspective and also from a, a maintenance manager's perspective, right? Um, so basically, we took that information and we converted it into a video and mixed that video with a story and presented it as a product education classroom, a simulated gamified product education classroom. So how does it all connect back to the original formula, the 300 page book? Okay, now, now, not all of these were 300 page books, but basically means we can take large chunks of information, compress that information, converted into various formats like charts, visuals, video uh, movies, etc., and add on stories and gamify the experience and present it in a gamified fashion, which is more engaging and immersive. And this is the need of the hour. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. And that's simulated gamification using GBL, which is game-based learning formulas. All right, so let's keep on going. So now this is infographic. So we already spoke about this. You can you can begin you know compress information into infographics, and infographics can be basically uh, a gamified, right, and included into video game environments, right. So so now let's look at the benefits. Now all of this sounds like uh, you know uh, uh, it, 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 you guys are like okay well, dude like how do we use this? Okay, what's a practical application? Now let's show me. Let's talk about some, yeah. Now let, let me show you the practical application. So the compressed process and game five seeds weaved into one simulated game figure session using two techniques I've developed called technical story writing and technical environment design mentioned in slide 30. And package is virtual event software with user interface leads to the following benefits. So these are the benefits, okay? The experience of actually going through the book and all its de de details later becomes much more easier if the students already have grasped the conceptual understanding 
depending in core concept and grouping ways, which are actually way beyond the explanation scope of the actual author. Even before studying the book, they've already studied the book. Okay, and it's made it easier now. And they did it, they did it in a way which they love. Okay. Two, this virtual workshop. All right, one second. Allows design a skill and occupation ma slash mastery based education models with immediate professional outcomes way more easily. This kind of that, that formula of taking an entire book and compressing and game plan and presenting it as a one day, two day, three day workshop, max, even a week long workshop basically uh, is more friendly when it comes to designing skill based. Uh, you know, workshops with immediate outcomes, which is what we need right now because of Corona. People have lost jobs. They just need to, you know, they need to quantum leap and learn a new skill. So because you see, they need, they got bills to pay, man. And I think we're pretty much getting into point, even youth are thinking on those slides. Like, I mean, all right, that's great about, you know, what we need some money now. <laughs> so this facilitates that. So it's that new snippet again. You guys can check that out, uh, that yellow text that you see there. Then let's go to the next one. Quantum leap into the understanding of the curriculum before the course began, which helps all, uh, overcome procrastination challenges and also allows students to decide whether more of this topic is for them or not. This is very useful because in many cases, students, uh, you know, they wait for, they go on for many months or years before they dump a subject, realize that perhaps that's not what they should offer as a career choice. All right, so, you know, you get to quantum leap into the topic very quickly and you realize that then you can choose, is it for me or not? Yeah, because sometimes people go on for months and then realize, oh God, that's not for me. Can you imagine people who lost one or two years, even three years? I know people who lost five years and never did whatever they learned, they did something totally else. Excitement through stories, visuals, etc. Since there are stories and visuals, it creates excitement. All right. Create intense bonding among participants. Bonding is important. And that, that's also social networking, educational social networking, since it's all online. The sci-fi classroom models in which, in the sci-fi classroom models in which educa the education is imparted is very engaging and educating. It's very sci-fi and therefore it's very engaging and educating. Now, simulations allow for experience education of concepts through role plays where participants experience engage with, uh, engage with conceptual elements and game five minutes. That's very important. You, if you're not reading a book, I'm not saying books are bad guys, all right? I love books, okay, uh, digital books. But what I'm saying is in this case, the simulated uh, gamification part puts them in environments, okay? Where, which are made of educational elements. So they're engaging, like in that case of that car example, I, I showed you, they were engaging with the car and the steering, reading things about the car. And, and the one before that, the brain part, they were in the brain itself. So it, it's very immersive and it's, uh, you know, very engaging, you know, the, if there's more, there's a different level of experience education happening. Now, gives participants an instant virtual support group of friends who also participated for combined study later. Yeah, so you, you simply get a network of people, okay? And then they, they say, in case of, you know, many of them decide to go ahead with the rest of the subject. And now you already have a list of people that you can connect with and continue studying together. The engagement and immersive factor of visually pleasing environment uh, by someone helps retention of information in a magnitude of different ways. Hmm? It helps in retention of information. Why? Because it's because of its various reasons. If I tell you guys the scientific reasons will take a long time, you can ask me questions later. Although the workshop planted conceptual seeds, these seeds come alive later and nourish and ex, uh, you know and exposed to connected information. So these are like seeds being planted, if you notice. And our seeds, when you water the seeds and give them fertilizer later, what happens? They go into trees, right? So you put these seeds into people and they go ahead and then they you know expose themselves to connected information like the rest of the book or whatever else on the internet connected with that topic, these seeds get nourished and they all, they all of a sudden are like, I know the answer, how did I know that? That's because you attended the workshop, you, you know? So, workshop can have additional study links, discussion blogs, Facebook page, et cetera, that can uh, multiple find yes. So now all of these workshops can have a virtual presence, basically, right? So uh, like, you know, like a page with, uh, you know, blogs, people can write comments, uh, you know, connect with each other, um, you know, share links, all of that additional information that if they restricted themselves to just studying the book, the conventional way, they would have never been able to access, not at that speed, right? 
Now the seats can be regamified a variety of ways. So the, this particular classroom can be remixed. Okay. So for moving, uh, since this time is a constraint, let's go faster. You guys can ask me later. So there's more, but you cover uh, that another session. Uh, we, uh, so there's a whole lot of stuff there. You guys go through this PPT. It's available. I, I'll make this available to you guys. You guys can go through this. Let's keep going on it. Now here's another example. Here. Now this is a classic example, guys. All right. And with the grace of God, I built it with my own hands. I code as well. Uh, so um, it's a remix, okay? But uh, what do I say? The whole co the concept, putting things together um, in this kind of fashion, it really, you know, ha I had my creative juices for it. So what is it basically? Let me see if I can play this again. Yes. So you can see there's a character. And he needs to, yeah, so he needs to look at, so whoever's playing basically, on the right side, he gets to see um, things from a textbook that he studied on circuits, electronic circuits, all right? Now, there's a circuit on the right side. And you can see there are three parts, of which one part is right and two parts are wrong. So it's a multiple choice question with three right uh, three options, visual options, and you need to choose one, right? There you go, right? And if you choose, then you, you get your scores up. If you choose the wrong one, your scores go down, and you have your enemies that you need to, you know, eliminate. And if you study your content well, then you can finish this faster than your friends. And you get something called pause time. If you see there's something called study pause there, you can go back and check you know, if in case you missed. But this whole experience, since it's gamified, it's going to be very different just going through the book, guys. You should, guys should know that, right? Now, can we do something like this for an entire book? Absolutely. Uh, you know, can we make variations of this? I mean, does it have to be, it look exactly like this? No, we can keep changing it, you know, change the color, change the character, change the villains, add on different bosses, you know, uh, give the character more powers, add on a different villain. We can do all kinds of crazy stuff, all right? Come to that. So this nice breaker we can do here, but then, you know, since we have a uh, constraint in time, let's just go ahead with the flow. All right. So um, now we're going into, so the first part we, we are done with, as, like I said, there are three key insights that we, we were to, um, um, you know, go through. We finished one, we got two more. If we have time, we'll do the icebreaker towards the end along with the Q and A's. But then uh, let's go on to the second element. Hmm? which is now how to design innovative education content, which is future ready and package for the age of coronavirus. This be, I mean, most educators can design decent content. I've seen some awesome uh, educators who can make some awesome content, right? Um, now, but as of now, the need is for us to really focus on, on creating content, which is future ready, right? Which is basically uh, something that people, which is very relevant to the current scenario. So, all right, so how do we do that? What are some insights that I can share with you as a virtual education software architect and how can we collaborate, uh, me on the technical side and you as a subject matter expert? How? Actually, I'm also a subject matter expert, but I, I choose to I code and I teach coding and stuff, but then uh, my choose to um, stick with uh, other areas and let the subject matter experts take care of most of the stuff. Okay, the educational part. So here, now here's one key area. It's a mindset thing. And we need to understand that um, we need a mindset change on, uh, not me, we as in you, the educator, uh, we need, uh, not uh, we, but as in what we're talking about is basically we need to help youth realize this one thing. And I, I'm pretty sure they already realized this, but they need to realize it a little better. Current mindset of youth. I will take up careers that my ancestors have been taking up. And at the same time, I will update myself on hot professional topics today based on today, to, uh, today's technology. This is the current mindset for the most part. And that's not the mindset that we do now. Uh-uh, no way. What's the mindset that we need? I will study forecasted technology and professional environments. Hmm? Sorry. 
or five years from now, five to 10 years from now, and start researching current trends towards these um, uh, current trends towards those forecasts so that when those forecasts materialize, I am ready for the job. Hmm? You guys can hear me, right? Peter, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm, I hear you. We're, we hear you and we're fascinated, Savan. <laughs> oh, thank yes. you. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, you know, I, it would make me so happy it, when we translate this into things that we do together, that that's when I, that would be my real victory, actually. So, okay, so let's just let me let, let's take you guys through, continue with it. All right. Uh, uh, so yeah, so current mindset of youth and uh, required mindset. I will now. This is the required mindset. I will study forecast the technology and professional environments of five to ten years from now and start researching current trends with those forecasts, so that when those forecasts materialize, I'm ready for the job. This is the mindset that we need. And you know what? Five months back, if you told this to somebody, they'd be like, you're crazy, man. What are you guys talking about? What are you talking about? I've had people say that to me. What are you talking about? But this is the scenario now. Okay, why? Because, you know, I mean, the hope is that someday we will not need to wear those these masks anymore. Dude. I mean, I'm done with this mask, all right? but I have to. <laughs> the hope is that someday we'll have, we can stop this. All right, and then what would the world look like at that time? We need to design modules for that time and to some extent to this time, yes. I mean, this time when we are on COVID and post COVID, this is where we need to focus on. So if that's the case, then we need to have this required mindset, which is I will study forecast technology and professional environments of five to 10 years from now and start researching current trends towards those forecasts so that when those forecasts materialize, I'm ready for the job, right? So in short, that means students will study the professional environments of tomorrow, today, so that when these environments manifest, they're ready for the job, okay? That's what it means. It means they will study what's gonna come up tomorrow, today, so that when they manifest, they're ready for the job. That's how fast things are going. You guys need to understand that, you know, before the COVID thing came up, due to the singularity chart, you guys should Google singularity chart when you get time, okay? Uh, if you check out Singular Chat, you'll find out that it was already so fast. What was what the kind of innovations that happened in 90 years was happening in one hour. I mean, yeah, 90 minutes, sorry. In an hour, sorry, yeah. The kind the speed of innovations had increased so much already before COVID that what took 90 years to come up with started happening in, in an hour. Globally with the internet and the kind of file sharing and the speed just like went ballistic, but now because of COVID, that very speed is 100x faster. I would say nothing less than 100x, but it's way more than that. So what do we have now? We got science fiction, that's what we have. This is science fiction right now. We are living science fiction around. A movie right now, this is science fiction. So we need science fiction like solutions. So we need science fiction mindset. So students will study the professional environments of tomorrow today, so that when these environments manifest, they're ready for the job. Uh, okay, so now a simulated gamification classroom that classroom with instant gratification that brings the above mentioned mindset change to two billion use from the redundant current mindset to the required futuristic mindset to the comforts of their homes and allow participants using their uh, smartphone through what they love to do most, like play video games and watch movies equals future ready. So this, this is one content that I designed. Um, you know, there are a couple of other stakeholders. Um, and um, we are in the process of bringing it out and I'd be definitely looking at collaborators such as yourself and anyone else in YouTube who would watch and who, if you're an educator, you want to contribute. Uh, guys, let's, let's, let's empower the world. We need to do this. Okay. Um, so a simulated game. So now this content is called Future Ready. And what does Future Ready do? Now, by all means, guys, if you guys feel there's some stuff that you feel that I'm saying is not, is conflicting what you feel, we are, I'm totally open to discussing it, okay? This is not like a one way, this is about growing together. This is not about me who knows everything. It's about let's grow together. All right. So the next slide is basically, uh, okay, now this is basically what, and I keep telling you about uh, virtual education software architects, my professional title. And that's what the blueprint of a virtual education software architect looks like, okay? What that is basically is an entire video game world Okay, and you can see 
um, you can see various aspects of it. Mm -hmm. uh, each one being a level and each level teaching a particular topic, simulate through simulated gamification. It has even a swimming pool, okay? Can we have swimming pools, virtual swimming pools? Absolutely, you guys saw that already, right? So that's that thing here. You can have sponsors, you can see Rebook here. This is a counseling center, all right? And here you have a flying classroom on top. It's very sci-fi actually. So have a look at it later. And you guys can ask me your questions and queries and how we can collaborate, all right? Um, now, and I, now here's a scenario where I'd like to, you know, where I, I'd like to uh, set some perception. There is a perception that people have that software design takes years. That's wrong, sorry. That's not the case. There are some software that does take years. But listen, I mean, it's not like the 90s anymore, man. What's the, this is 2020 here. All right. I mean, there are ways by which software design has become way more faster now. I'm talking faster than one day. You guys believe that? That's true. And we can put together software through modular application development, where uh, we're not putting together, we're not starting from the scratch, where a programmer has a D-base of codes and he's putting prefabricated codes and join like Lego blocks, right? You're joining things together rather than starting from the scratch. Okay, now can all software be made in one day? No. But can some software be made in one day? Yes. Can it be done in one week? Yes. In a month? Yes. So what am I trying to basically say? Let's get this perception out that any software means, dude, I mean, does that mean like, oh my God, two years? No, no, you don't know. We can do it even in a few days. I know software that can put together in a few hours. All right, so we'll talk about that too. So now here, now since we talk about content and relevant content, here's another relevant content. I, I sincerely hope that you guys are influenced by this and if, wherever in whichever part of the world you are in, if you wish to implement this particular uh, uh, storyline that I'm working on in your language, we can do that, okay? It's a gamified story. And the name of the story is when fear is not an option. Isn't that a scenario that we all have now? You think about it. Fear is not an option. It's just not an option. Think about it. There are billions right now. Fear is just not an option. They get into it. But that's what they are not supposed to do. There are other things that we can do. This is what I'm here to say to you. Okay? But there are other things that we can do. Fear is not an option. But in this, and, and, this, and actually fear is not an option because that's just very, getting into fear is like a ditch. It just pulls you in then if you get into it. So I've learned not to get into it. And there's faith that plays a role, but uh, that's something that's spiritual and we'll speak about another time, maybe one-on-one. -on -one. So um, the story laid out as a gamified story application takes participants through the challenges faced by Natasha and her friends who must face COVID-19 related upskilling and psychological challenges in order to survive. Filled with insights and encouragement, the story compels participants to disrupt the fear of disruption by experiencing the journey of a central character who must almost be rooted into a new space beyond the mansion of their people themselves. All right, so this is what it is. You see, on the left side, we have what used to be. On the right side, we have what's coming up. And right in below, you have the coronavirus. All right, so how do people, people have to basically mutate, guys. I mean, let's just bring the facts on the table. When I speak muted, I know that sounds like an extreme term, but that's the truth. That old version of you will not do. To me, that's fascinating. I love that. You know, I, I'm a, I love exploring and I, I just find that so amazing. It's just how you look at it though. Okay, so. All right, so now, now let's look at how do you write content, educational. These are some techniques that I'd like to share with you where you can write Edu uh, you know, content, coronavirus related educational stories where you intertwine educational material with a story or you weave a story around educational concepts. And I'm talking a random concept. Like you just, if I ask you guys 10 random concepts and then I weave a story around those 10 random concepts all of a sudden right now, that is called technical story writing. On top, you can see the title here, technical story writing. Okay, you build an environment to that story in a video game world, that's technical environment design. 
these are two key terms that I have coined. Okay. So technical story writing equals story writing style where concepts and their practical applications become scene builders. Like I told you, all knowledge, bottom line is what? All knowledge, basically concepts have their practical applications. I mean, there's a lot of jargons if you want to get into it, but let's not get into it. I mean, when we need to, we will, but for now, let's keep it simple. All knowledge, no matter what knowledge, is basically concepts and its practical applications. That's all, right? So, technical story writing is where concepts, we take, you, you take, we take 10 or 15 random concepts, to look at their practical applications. And those practical applications become scene builders. It means we visualize it and start with the story and the story moves ahead, keeping these things in mind, these practical applications in mind, and you keep flowing. And then there's a lot of, uh, you know, throwing things, uh, you know, left, right, tossing things up, down, a lot of stuff that goes up. But eventually, if you keep at it, it'll come out well. Just keep at it. Okay. I mean, there's some more stuff to it, so we'll talk about it. So the first, <laughs> it's very interesting though. So the first elements to come into the storyboard is not the story, but educational concepts around which the story is to uh, be uh, customized, right? So in this case, the first elements to come out into the storyboard is not the story. What, what comes to the storyboard first? Like you know what a storyboard is, right? So in this case, the storyboard basically has the, custom, the concepts that need to be, uh, you know, customized. It's those elements that come into the platter of the storyboard first. Okay. So the art of creatively developing a story around these concepts equals equals technical story writing. Visualizing and creating story-based environments that act as a simulation that complements the embedded educational data equals technical environment design. So put down, you guys, guys put down your questions. We'll talk about it. Right? So now, if you are an educator anywhere in the world and you want to work with me, collaborate with me, okay? So that's an important thing. So how do you put all of this knowledge into practical application? You, you can try and do some of the stuff yourself. And I can still help you out to empower you wherever I can. But the second option is, and I mean that, okay, you guys, you can, you can definitely, you know, if you don't have the budgets, you can, you still want to talk, we can talk, uh, you know, money is important, but it's even my, it's uh, to me, I'll be really honest with you, to me, love first, okay? So, uh, now, if you are to collaborate, Let's just say we are looking at something with a larger budget and we want to collaborate. We want to create an organized system between you and me. Let's say you are somebody who is an educator. You are, let's say, the principal of a school or let's say head teacher of an institution or, uh, you know, and you want to do a future ready workshop or coronavirus related awareness workshop, okay, for a thousand students around, uh, you know, your locality and they can't get out of the home, uh, homes, of course, even you can't because of, uh, you know, and even I can't. I mean, we can, but they're not like we used to, you know, how it used to be. So, you know, we, we, we study, uh, you know, we're doing this online. Okay. How do we collaborate? This is a model right here. Okay. So at the bottom, you can see me. On the right, on the, on the left is you, subject matter expert. And on the right, you have a client who's a sponsor. We need someone who's paying for this, right? So it could be a client. Why? Since we are looking at a larger number of people, it's not limited to 20 people or 30 people, and since we're doing a larger number of people, we can look at a sponsor. In the virtual world, there is no limit, guys. You need to stop thinking, you can think 20 students and 30 students, but how you can think larger number of students too. That's the virtual world, okay? Now, whether we get a sponsor or whatever the deal is, this is the system that I'm trying to show to you to tell, give you confidence that there are many tools available on the internet where I can, can sit wherever and you can sit wherever and we can still make gamified, uh, you know, simulated gamification based educational content for your students or for the world. Right? All right, so. Now the last point. So we covered game gamification. Okay. We covered content for simulated gamification modules. Now let's look at the simulation part a little more closely. That's the final part. Okay. Did someone say, okay, that's a topic. Did someone say photorealistic virtual restoration of schools and universities? Guys, you know, those buildings that you guys went to for 15 days or 15 years, or 15 days, 15 years. Uh, you know, we can, why, why not bring it back to life? It's, uh, it sounds crazy. I mean, listen, you need to think crazy. Crazy is good. Who says crazy is bad? All right, so 
So if you see here, this interface basically is, um, you know, it has a building that's being replicated virtually. It's actually a symbolic, uh, it's, it's not just symbolic, but that kind of photorealism is possible with the kind of simulations that I, uh, I'm, uh, you know, that I would like to share here. So, sorry. Now, if you, if you look at it, uh, so what, what is the reason why I can promise you this kind of uh, photorealism? Because it's not 3D, it's actually 2D. And it's, it's created using an, an architecture called isometrics. Google it when you guys get time. I-S-O-M-E-T-R-I-C-S. -S. It's 2D that looks like 3D. And since it's 2D that looks like 3D, we can do photographs. We can take photographs of your building. As a matter of fact, I'd like to share something with you guys. Uh, check this out one sec. I'll just have to go off the screen for a second, just a second. So yeah, I'm assuming you guys can see. Can you guys see this uh, change of screen? Yes, we can see it. Oh, okay, great. So if you check this out on top, here you go. See, that's, that, that's now a, a photorealistic, that's, we can do something way better than that too. But then what I'm trying to say is that's a replication of an actual building and then we we can access it and it looks like a software it is a software an application browser based and you can have all your students access you know um the building okay and what does the classroom now here's an example of how the classroom can look from inside right here's another one all right so that's an office actually the inside, inside or inside, you know, but it can be even more photorealistic. So I have something which is quite photorealistic here. Um, this one here. Now you can see the buildings on the left side. Okay, it's actually a collage. It's not gonna look so crowded in the real deal, but you can see the photorealism possible. These are actual faces of actual people you know, inside as avatars. That's because it's 2D, okay? If it was, we couldn't come up with that kind of uh, photorealism, but that's because it's 2D and it's isometric, right? So um, what am I trying to say here? Let's go back to the PPT. Okay, you guys can check out these things on the site later, the site is on. I also shared the PowerPoint so okay. they can that's good that's good that too. that's good all right so so here we are now you can see this is how the avatar is uh made you know you upload your selfie on the left side you can see there's a you know a, you know the regular graph and then this is the design basically. Okay, well, in, in the application, it's gonna look very, very application-like. This is just a design for you to see how it looks like, right? And then you have the wig, and then you have, the body is pre-fed, okay? So you can have a realistic looking body, right? And then you're, you're here now inside the classroom, all right? As an avatar and you can move around just like how you do in a video game or let's say a second life or something like that, right? So, now, you, 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 I, I came up with something called easy avatar control, which means I, you know, the keys change expressions. It's more like the real deal, all right? So you can do all kinds of stuff. You can you know, clap, swim, collect, chat, scuba dive, fly, right? So, so here's the deal. I designed photorealistic simulations of buildings that are now inaccessible due to COVID-19 and use avatar-based game creation game baseline. So I explained that to you. Photorealism achieved through isometric level design, I explained that to you. They can be looked at as parallel activities and as a real world simulation events for entire cities and can be used by buildings of schools and companies affected by COVID-19. Yes, so you know that there's a sentimental value here. You know, when you when you you understand that. Right? People, this sentimental you're getting it back what you thought you would never go back to, even if it's virtually, I mean it's the 
it's not going to be like the real deal. But in some ways, actually better than the real deal. Okay, so there's a sentimental portion here, right? So uh, that's why. So the question is, uh, what is the value that this gives to educators? Well, that's easy to guess. What about that brick and mortar building that you went for work for, let's say, the last 20 years or something? And why not bring it back to life virtually? So you need to think about this and give me a feedback on it and let's work on it, right? Now, now here's the part, right? Doesn't software development take years? This is the doubt that many educators have. I'm, I'm like, nope. And why? Okay, so here, next slide. This is why. This is what I talked to you about earlier. Modular application development based 7 to 30 day application delivery method. Programmer slash developer myself and follow a modular application development style where I put prefabricated, pre tested parts, codes, or other components together rather than starting from scratch. And here, hence, application development is way more faster than OOP, which is object oriented programming approaches. Right? So, that and many other reasons, guys. Software, not all software needs to take too much time. Okay? It's getting faster. And uh, modular application development, for example, uh, it really helps with that. Okay, so let's just make if you if you if you're not a coder, just understand that it's fast now. Okay. So now in that part, there's this last thing. Uh, okay, I love second life. Like I say, you're an educator, you don't want to restore your building, or you don't want you don't want you know you want something different. So you, you let's just say you like second life, you like Minecraft, and you like Fortnite, and I only want I do not wish to uh, you know restore my building. What do you do then? How do we collaborate then? Yeah. So that's now something that I'm developing for Fortnite. And, um, okay, I work with such virtual world developers and designing engaging, uh, engaging digital events and e-gaming models within their worlds for them. So the GBL thing that we talked about earlier, game-based learning formulas, these can be implemented as digital education events in these worlds. So if you, if you want to conduct um, uh, you know, workshop for your students with high-end learning, but in a game fat fashion, in let's say Second Life or any other virtual world, like maybe Minecraft. A lot of Minecraft people create, you know, custom environment teachers do that. So we can do that together. This is what I'm here to tell you, all right? It doesn't have to be always, you be over, you need to make the entire building, no. We can also do just activities, all right? We can design content. We can do a future ready in, in Second Life, why not? Okay. So keeping all of that in mind, let's come to a conclusion note, okay? Now, listen, guys, due to the pandemic, we are preparing students for jobs in the future that don't exist today and are training employees for market conditions that are mutating at quantum speeds on a daily basis. The only way to solve this problem would be that we forecast, visualize, and create <coughs> alternate and science fiction-like educational and training platforms today, which we're supposed to exist tomorrow. Excuse me. Sorry. Here's the scene. Okay. <clears throat> because of the pandemic, we're creating jobs that don't exist today. Okay. We have preparing students with jobs that don't exist today. And are training employees with market conditions that are mutating at quantum speeds on a daily basis. Are we preparing, uh, you know, this is why this talk about reskilling. And people are like, we need to you know, upskill on a lifelong basis, yeah? And that's a good thing. And we keep ourselves occupied, it's good. We keep ourselves open to learning, it's good, right? Um, so, now, uh, now, so this is the deal, all right? So we have, uh, you know, we, we are preparing students for jobs that don't exist, uh, you know, uh, you know, in the today, and we're preparing, you know, training employees for market conditions that are mutating quantum space on a daily basis. Now, how do we solve this problem? That we forecast. I don't know if you guys have heard of this term called uh, futurists. Okay, there's a bunch of people called futurists. Google it, and some pretty interesting information. These are people who study patterns and forecast the future. They're called futurists. Uh, they're interesting people. Okay, uh, would you, which I, would I, would I say I'm a futurist? Kind of, but there's a spiritual side to it, which we can talk about another time. Um, the only way to solve the problem would be that, that we forecast, visualize, and create and create. Alternate and science fiction like educational and training platforms today, which we're supposed to exist tomorrow. That's what we need to do. We need to think of what's going to happen tomorrow. And which is science fiction today. We need to make tomorrow science fiction into today's reality. Because today's reality is science, like science fiction, right? I mean, we, we, nobody expected this whole thing to turn out this way with the COVID thing, 
right? And there are many good sides to it though. Now, I give in this one last thing, okay? Um, I'm here to tell you that you can, and that we can do that, what's mentioned about, and, uh, but we need the right kind of transformations, the right technological support and motivation, okay? Um, so you see, as educators, if you guys are not coders, or if you guys are not, uh, you know, let's say you are someone who's been a, a principal of a school or a, or a dean of the university or, uh, you know, on those lines, or maybe, maybe a teacher, you know, um, don't worry about it. Okay, there's, there's stuff that, I mean, from a technical perspective, I'm not like, okay, well, I, I'm not saying you guys need, you don't need to worry, but I'm just saying from a technical perspective, this, if you were to think of making applications, don't think of it as in terms of, oh my God, that's like such a my God, humongous thing. How do we do it? I'm a teacher. I mean, I don't, I've not I've never done something like that before. Guys, listen, let's just take the, let's decode, let's just make it simple. What is a software, basically? Software is basically visuals and codes put together in the digital environment for a purpose. That's all. That's all visuals and codes put together in the digital space for a reason. That's all. That's what a software is. I mean, is that as, I mean, does that mean that we totally underestimate software? No, we don't do that. There's a lot of things that we can do with it, but there's a, if you have to look at it in from a simple, from a, you know, let if we simplify it, it helps us, you know, take away psychological obstacles. You know, sometimes we make up all of these mountains inside our head. Like, oh, how do we do that? Such a great, my God, what? Trust me, some things you just simplify and go keep it simple. It's very simple. What's a software is basically simply visuals and codes put together in the digital environment for a purpose. That's all. Okay, so I'm here to tell you that you guys can, you can. Now here's the ending note. Okay, I like these punchlines, right? Uh, you see, even the act of taking in your next breath with all its uniqueness. Okay, this this next breath, each one of us with all its uniqueness, you need to think deep here. Because in this particular breath, although it's only taking the breath, but this very moment with the surrounding environment, which is, you know, you have your own unique environment around you and situation and scenario, and, you know, your biological makeup on a cellular level, et cetera, et cetera, your schematics, et cetera, et cetera. It's never happened before. This is the first time that all of these combination of elements are coming together in this combination and you're taking this breath from this new combination is convergent to you. And this is happening on a second by second basis. You see, you know, it's never happened before. This taking a breath business, even that has so much of uniqueness to it. Yet we ascribe doing the new to certain so-called fantasy idols only. When you think it's only for few people, you know, from fantasy idols somewhere. No, it's not. Why do we do it then? So you see, that's what you know. I mean, there's something really weird about human beings, you know. I think sometimes, what's the big deal? What's the deal like? <laughs> something really weird. Hmm? So um, let's stop being weird. Let's be unique. Let's embrace our uniqueness. Let's embrace. Um, let's embrace the fact that. Um, that we are not limited by our thoughts. There's so much more and we need to get there because the situation that we have in hand is beyond what we thought will happen. It's beyond imagination. So if we are going to limit our identity to our imagination, then how can we find solutions to things that are beyond our imaginations? We, we need to go beyond our imagination. This is why I use the word mutate. We need to really go into a next level and think as a different species now. All right. So there's, there's, that's, uh, there's a lot to talk about. I will do that in another session. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Um, uh, I think we can start taking um, questions. Um, so thank you, you. Thank you, Sivan. Sivan. Uh, feel free, guys, to uh, unmute yourselves, um, or you can add your question to the chat. That's fine. I can go ahead and ask them. Absolutely. Yes, yes, you can, you can. Please do. Um, thank you again for the most exciting presentation. Um, thank you, Peter. I really appreciate you talked about um, the mindset 
everyone have to have uh, a mindset in order to do this kind of thing. But my question is, the technical story writing. <coughs> yes. At, at what point do you start the technical story writing? Do you start with the algorithm or you go straight to the storyboard? At what point do you start storyboard or technical writing? Which one? There's an algorithm. Mm -hmm. right? um, mm -hmm. Basically, it, it guides you how you're going to write your program. So my question is, at what mm -hmm. point do you start the technical writing. Do you start it before you go to algorithm or before you develop a storyboard? When you mean algorithm, you, you as of now, here in this context, what you're saying is the application part, isn't it? Is that what you're saying, basically? From a converting it into an application perspective, is that what you're saying? What am I, is the, the, the basic start of it. it yeah, okay, so let me. Let's yeah, yeah. I don't have anything. I have a pencil in my hand. So let's mm. algorithm, or mm -hmm. should I go straight to the storyboard where I can scribble ideas, convert those ideas into the algorithm? But the question does it work? Mm -hmm. it, it, yes. Okay. So I got your question. So where do you start, isn't it? Yes. And let's say you just have a pencil and paper in your hand, and where do you start, right? So technical story writing for the for the first thing you need to do is note down the subjects, the topics that you want to use as uh, you know the concept that you want to customize into the story. That's why it's called technical story writing. Why? Because there's the technical education side to it, which means there is a educational side to it, right? Yes, sir. So all the concept. Let's assume that you have. Um, let's say you have one subject, which is um, equations in mathematics, and you have another subject, which is, let's say, uh, cryonics. Another subject, let's say, basically is, uh, I don't know, robotics. Let's say these are three subjects, right? Hmm? Yes, sir. So I would basically note this down. And now you need to understand even these are broad subjects. So you have specifically a sub-concept, I'm assuming. Or maybe actually the actual, you know, the topic by itself is the concept that you wish to communicate to students and you want to basically, uh, you know, write, you want to communicate in story form, isn't it? Yeah. So let's do it right now. So we have three topics, right? So we looked at uh, one, we looked at uh, equations, which is math equations. Like a second thing we looked at is cryonics. Okay. And the third thing is basically, uh, I think we spoke about robotics right mm -hmm. so you first write down these three concepts and the definition of these concepts which is what you want to teach the students to whatever depth that you choose right and then uh, what you do is basically um, this is where you're now you now now that you put down the concepts and their practical applications now you need to use them as triggers for your imagination right for example, if I were to look at the term uh, mathematics, the first thing that comes into my mind is a mathematics professor, right? So a mathematics professor who had to use equations to, to uh, solve a formula that brought, let's say a fellow professor, a female professor, uh, out of uh, the cryonics chamber, the cryonics chamber, cryonics is basically where you freeze dead people and then they can come back to life later. Okay, so you brought her back and then he needed her to basically, let's say, uh, create a robot for which now he needs to engage in robotics related information. You see, we created a story right there from three subjects, isn't it? And they were three uh, completely unconnected subjects. Did you understand that? Am I was it? Was, am I miss, am I missing anything? No, 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 no. Yeah, good. So yeah, so that's the basic of it. Basically, we go that way, and then you use the subject. So in the storyboard, first you write the subjects, okay, the concepts, and then you write down their practical applications, and then use them to trigger the imagination, and then flow with it. Okay, now there's another way you can you can put down your imaginations, like you know whatever comes in your imagination, you put it down, and then let's say you have five different 
um, storylines of types that's coming in, uh, you know, coming up. You put that down and try and see if you can make connections between these storylines and these subjects. And you can go that way too. And yet another way is just, you know, have a nice cup of coffee, your what's up, right? <laughs> and, you know, let yourself flow. Okay, just flow with it. Um, the second part of the question to that, thank you so much for um, taking me through that journey. Okay, um, the second, you're welcome. The second part of that question is, mm. um, let's take a scenario. I'm in Jamaica, right? Okay. Um, I don't have many the gamification partners or fellow teachers and the rest of it with a lot of background. No, mm -hmm. my question is, do I need to have a solid programming background in order to get this thing done? If yes, how can I collaborate with other people in order to get assistance where I need help? So uh, there are two aspects to this, okay? You, first of all, I love Jamaica, man. Reggae music is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Pop Marley music is like, it's like welcome anytime. Yeah. So uh, uh, the thing is basically, um, there's, two, there's two aspects to this, okay? Aspect number one is basically, um, listen, let's take learning coding. It's, it's not a big deal, okay? Software is basically uh, visuals and uh, you know, numbers, uh, sorry, codes thrown into a digital environment for a purpose. It's as simple as that, basically, right? If you take that whole, there's a psychological element to it. And what I'm trying to say is over a period of three to four months, there are easy tools available. For example, there is uh, there's something that I started with, not I didn't start with. Uh, well, let's just say I sort of like, um, now, that, that's basic now. Is this, uh, what you can start with basically, yeah, well, here's the deal. You can start with something called Stencil, right? Uh, that's something that I've, you can Google it, check out Stencil, okay? It's a visual, it's a lifting, it means you don't need to code as in type to code. You can, uh, it's got like this uh, block-based environment and you can basically move the blocks and start programming. And that's a great way to start off and there's tons and tons of tutorials on, on YouTube on how to, you know, basically get about the stencil. So that's one way to do it. There's, of course, the other, now, if you want to go a little more deeper, you can go into Unity. And Unity has the same block by uh, block based, you know, uh, it's called finite state machines. It's a, it's not, you don't have to type the codes in, but you can move things around and learn code. Uh, it's called Playmaker, Unity and Playmaker. So you can get into these systems to get into coding. You know, and both are visual environments. If you're visual, if you're making stories and stuff, both both of these places are basically great places to start. Now, till then, you wish to collaborate, okay? And let's just say you don't have the, the right resources, uh, you know, around you. Mm -hmm. Listen, I mean, distance is a solution, brother. Let's get this one fact right. Now, especially in the age of Corona, collaborating with somebody somewhere 5,000 kilometers away from you or 2,000 kilometers away from you, it's not a big deal. There are lots of collaboration tools. You know, Moodle, for example, that's a, that's a collaboration tool. There are, there's Discord, there's all kinds of, you know, collaboration tools at Zoom right now, we're talking to each other. So if you get the idea down on a piece of paper as a concept note, okay? Let's say you want to write a story like what you spoke about earlier. You wrote a technical story, uh, using technical story writing, you put the story together and it can, uh, it's got embedded educational concepts. And now let's say it's customized around Corona and you, you want to publish it as an app for the rest of Jamaica, right? So let's say you have someone from the government who wants to sponsor this because it's for, for the larger good of the people, basically, you know, creating awareness among, among the youth on, you know, how Corona works, right? So you put the story down on a piece of paper, okay? And uh, you look at, let's say, five to 10 different things about Corona, basically, subjects, and you look at the practical applications, gamify the whole thing. I mean, sorry, uh, yeah, you basically put it down as a story, and you now work with a video game developer to turn it into a gamified app, 
then how does that work? Okay, let's say the story has 10 scenes. Okay, so you go, uh, uh, you know, you have people go through one scene. Okay, let me show you something. Uh, Nelly, can I just take a minute and show him something here, please? Let's just take a minute. Hello, Nelly. Okay, can you hear me, Peter? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm here. Um, it's, it's just that it's getting a bit um, tight Good. with time. We've got another session coming soon and we need to clear okay. our brains. But what I, what I did suggest to Peter is that you guys connect yeah, you know, I'll share the uh, email information with you. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, Savan, yeah. yeah. Peter, and I also um, would like to ask you, in front of everyone here formally, if you would be willing to give a workshop on Moodle for Teachers, which is a free um, platform for educators around the world. So, if you could mm -hmm. help us out, I would help you. I wrote you um, a message on Facebook, so you can read it there later on. But the idea, of course, is collaborate. Harshita has a question. Harshita is a um, a computer coder. She's she actually uh, teaches coding. Peter, oh. if you're interested in uh, what Harshita does, I know she's kind of busy because she's doing um, her PhD, from what I remember. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Harshita, I don't know if you have the mic, Harshita, but she asks, you talked about chatbots with video games. How do you integrate them? What technologies do you use? So I mentioned Blender. I don't know if that's the right um, program. Uh, Harshita, can you hear me, Harshita? Yeah, she can hear. I don't know if she can use the uh, mic, though. She hears you. Yes. Yes, Hello. I can hear you. Hello. Oh, yes. oh yes. there she's Thank got you. Hi. Hello, Dr. Yeah. 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 So, so Peter, I'll answer your question after the session. We'll connect in five, ten minutes when the the session is done. Okay. So be around, and in the meanwhile, uh, after we can connect on hangouts or something like that. So in the meanwhile, uh, uh, Harshita. So your, what was your question again? You want to know how you uh, can? Can you repeat your question if you don't mind? Like you talked about having chatbots along with the video games for uh, mm -hmm. for interactive learning. So how do you integrate the two, like the chatbot and the video game? What technologies do you basically use for that? So I use Unity and C Sharp. All right. Um, so you, you, Unity 3D is the software. It's a it's a, an excellent software for uh, you know uh, you know for creating gamified environments. You can check out Unity 3D on Google, and uh, and you can check that out. And uh, yeah, so that's how we do it. And then there's of course game based learning. Uh, which is basically, uh, you know, taking you know coding related information and um, again, you know, converting it into uh, basically a video game like session. So there's one here right now. Let me just show that to you. Just take 30 seconds. Just a second. Let me just be around. Just a second. Let me just screen share with you. Right. Just so you can go to my site and check this out. So here it is. I and added Unity to the chat box. Um, the link, Harshita, is yeah. there. Mm -hmm. My students, uh, they really use it, they use it, uh, young learners, you know, yeah. 14, 15 year olds use it. It's very effective. Yeah, so you can check this link out to Hashita. So let me just share it here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, I think I, I guess, uh, is, you can did that privately. It? No, I'll, I'll do Ooh, it. I'll, I'll do it yeah. for you. Sorry. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, no problem. There. So what okay. that is basically is when you get time, uh, Ashita, you can have a look at it. And it's basically a video of uh, a module that I designed where I converted a, a JavaScript textbook uh, and uh, you know into a video game. Basically, you, you go through the text and then you play the video game to answer the questions. And it teaches you concepts of coding simultaneously. So you can check that out. That's nice. All right. So thank yeah. you. Thank you, thank you uh, everyone. It's, uh, you've provided so much information. My mind is, um, is weird, as you said, which is a good thing, right? <laughs> which so is a thank, good thing, Nelly. <laughs> yes, as I was saying. So thank you. Thank, but, thank you for the, thank you for the invitation, uh, Nelly, to the Moodle teachers thing. It's so kind of you. Thank you. That's you, what you I do. You invited me in. That's what well, I do. I you. provide uh, free professional development for educators, so. If you want to be part of that, that would be great. Yes, I would love to. Great. Wonderful. All right. So we've got plans for you, uh, Savan. Lots of plans. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank so you. Um, 
We'll see you later on. There are more sessions to come and you're also invited to VW MOOC, Sylvain, yes. to the other sections. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nelly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for this. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Have a good evening, all of you.